Most of my life, I have used the cheap Hanukkah candles. The ones that come in thin cardboard boxes already falling apart on the supermarket shelf. These have colors too perky or faded to be taken seriously. They emerge warped, some even cracked. You've used them too, so you know what I mean. The wicks of many are frayed like the fringes of prayer shawls. And some wicks are merely stubs. As for the bases, they are all different sizes, either too small or too large for the cups. So getting them to stand up straight takes extraordinary measures. Lighting little paper matches that burn your fingertips while you melt the bases, glue them with wax to the cups, free the stubby wicks, solder all the cracks so crippled ones won't fall apart, and set your house or apartment on fire. <laughs> Thus, you have already lit the candles two or three times before lighting them for the festival, <laughs> and must watch them closely, fire extinguisher nearby, lest the festival of lights turn into a three-alarm conflagration. Eight days of this requires nerves of steel and lots of burn ointment, not to mention a great number of cheap Hanukkah candles with unconvincing colors. Pop quiz, how many candles are required? This is a smart audience. I'll tell you how I did it. Mathematically, it can be expressed with Gauss's summation formula. M times M plus 1 divided by 2, all minus 1, where N equals the number of cheap candles lit the final night, or 9, giving 44 candles to repair, fit, light, watch nervously for 8 days, please note interfaith couples. Gauss's summation may also be used for the 12 days of Christmas gifts. <laughs> Just change n to 12 and do not subtract 1 from the total sum. But back to Hanukkah. Of course, during this time, you'll remember that some of last year's cheap candles were unusable, so you broke into this year's box already. <laughs> and now you're short a few. But that's okay, because if you're like me, you'll get distracted, miss a day, creating surplus for next year. All this is if you only light one Hanukkah, but my wife has her contemporary one. And I have my favorite brass one. And then there's the kitschy one, Mom, who is not observant, gave us for our wedding. It looks like the walls of Jerusalem if they were painted blue. <laughs> Many flames then leap up, and for an hour or so flicker and dance the horror. We watch the lights, experiencing mixed and complicated thoughts and emotions about being Jews. The wax drips, making a puddle on the freshly dusted sideboard, and the candles lean, and shadows shrink and elongate, and there's always that last one that keeps on burning when it should have gone out. <laughs>